All right. Did not forget. This is good. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and get started, y'all. I know people are going to be popping on, but that's okay because we're recording. <laughs> and if they miss the beginning, they can just watch the recording. And I'm also, I have my little thing here that I'm going to read from because otherwise I will ramble as y'all have noticed <laughs> for the last few minutes. <laughs> Uh, capacity for rambling is notorious. And um, okay. And here we go. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I am Francis Dow. Uh, my co host here is Charles Cameron. Together, this is we have formed the Modern Quilt Study Group, and we that we administer and organize. We're happy for anyone else who wants to come up and help administer and organize. We are, uh, we would welcome you. Uh, at this point, if everyone can mute, that would be very cool. And also, okay, Charles, at this point, you want to start, if you haven't uploaded your keynote, sure. that, yep. um, and that may come up and we may see that. Um, and, oh, can we spotlight the speakers? Yeah, that's um, that's a good, I don't, I don't know if at this point it may be a moot point, but um, if someone, we will definitely do that when Bridget and Charles are start talking. And if someone can remind me, <laughs> How to do that. Um, that would be super cool. Let's see. I don't know. Anyway, let me go ahead and do the introduction and then hand it over to Charles. And then as we're conversing, I'll figure out how to do that. If someone wants to put it in the chat to remind me how to spotlight the speakers, I sure would appreciate that. Anyway, for those of you who are new to the Modern Quilt Study Group, we are in an informal collection of quilters and quilt lovers who are interested in exploring modern quilts and the modern quilt movement. We began meeting a year ago and have discussed such topics topics as historic and aesthetic parallels between modern art and modern quilts, the role of derivatives in the modern quilt movement, and the evolution of modern quilts over the years. We are not academics, nor are we associated with the Modern Quilt Guild, although Charles and I are both uh, members of the Modern Quilt Guild, and I suspect a lot of you are as well. Um, as noted, our policy is usually not to record, but today we are recording. Um, given the popularity of our guests and um, the, the nature of the conversation. So today we will be talking to and talking about Bridget Derma and Denise Schmidt, two well-known modern quilters who are two of this year's quilt con judges. Stacy Watson, a historian, is the third. Uh, Charles and I thought, given how close we are to quilt con, that this would be uh, a great time to get to know Bridget and Denise better. After some discussion, we have decided to leave questions about judging quilt con out of the conversation. We don't want to make anyone uncomfortable, give away company secrets, or in any way, just, yeah. Anyway, Charles is going to begin uh, with Bridget, as you can see here. And after this discussion, after their discussion, we will have a short period of Q&A with Bridget. You can raise your hand and uh, put a, or put a question in the chat ask you to keep muted during the discussion and the, the meeting will run for about an hour. If we go over a little bit, that's cool, but we want to respect people's time. So Charles. Take yes, it. I, it'd be my pleasure. Uh, thank you all again for joining and most importantly, thank you Denise and Bridget. Bridget, it's so nice to meet you actually formally. I don't think we've ever met in person or even by a Zoom. We've certainly traded a few text messages and such, but very, yeah. very nice to be able to speak with you today. Yeah, likewise. <laughs> and I apologize for the misspelling at the beginning. I'm an engineer by training. And so <laughs> I'm glad, glad I was able to capture that really quick. No worries. Very good. So we have the pleasure today of speaking to two modern quilt geniuses. Uh, we're going to start with Bridget. Um, and I just have a series of slides that I've put together to prompt our conversation. Um, so let's dive in. So Bridget, what, what we know of you from the QuiltCon website and from your article in Quilt Folk, it, you're a modern quilter, a pattern designer and teacher. Um, your work has been featured in a number of different journals and publications, as well as exhibited at the Bailey Contemporary Arts Center, as well as many times at QuiltCon. Um, congratulations. Uh, you reside in Gainesville, Florida with your husband, daughter, and cat, who I had to do a little bit of research, but understand her name to be Olivia. Olive. Olive. She'll Olive. Probably I got pop it in wrong. at some point. <laughs> She'll correct uh, you. Olive. Yeah, please. Well, so, hey, I was wondering, please, could you give us just a little bit more information about your background? What what brought you to sewing and quilting in the first place? Um. So I 
Uh, speaking of dolls' houses, I, had a, I was a very avid dolls' house person when I was a kid. So I used to um, kind of like hand sew little clothes for I had like little mice people. <laughs> so I was like very into like just like tiny hand sewing when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, and I sewed some clothes for myself in college, um, and then kind of put it aside for a while. I took up knitting. I do, I, and I still knit a lot. Um, and then I lived in New York and I moved to Los Angeles. I ended up coming back to New York and working in Tribeca, which was really near the Pearl Soho shop. So yeah, wow. I um, kind of actually, it's funny, I was telling um, Denise when uh, when we met for judging that my first fabric I bought was some flea market fancy of Denise's and I thought, mm, what, oh, nice. what can I make with this? And I, my daughter at the time was was small, so I was um, kind of making clothes for her. I was using the Oliver and S patterns, um, and then, so yeah, I, then I discovered Denise's book, <laughs> Denise Smith, Schmidt Quilts, uh -huh. and got really excited about the idea of quilting because I, you know, putting those two things together. Um, and I made a quilt from from that book, the um, What a Bunch of Squares quilt for my niece, um, and then pretty quickly got interested in designing my own quilt. So not really necessarily patterns, but kind of mm. coming up with my own designs and making my own quilts. And then um, in 2011, I moved to Gainesville and found the Gainesville Modern Quilters. Um, and at the time it was the Vanessa Vargas, who's Quilty Gemini, if anyone knows her, she's the president. Oh, and yeah. She, yeah, and she really, <laughs> um, really encouraged me to it's like she was very complimentary of the quilts I brought I was very shy and felt awkward and I brought my quilts to the first meeting and she was just really encouraging and um kind of got me really excited about you know the guild and the possibility of coming to QuiltCon and so yeah that's kind of like how I got started that's mostly great. maybe maybe the locations are different but I think a lot of us can recognize that story right going to your yeah. first MQG meeting and feeling a little uh, a little maybe intimidated to be there and having this really warm welcoming group draw you in. Um, yeah, as absolutely. I was, as I was doing a little reading, um, I saw that you mentioned that your grandmother, she didn't quilt, but she knitted. I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about that or some of your other early influences in sewing. Who, who, who showed you the ropes? Um, I, yeah, so my grandmother was a super accomplished knitter. So mm -hmm. I was born in England and my family's British. So I, we used to spend the summers with my grandmother in the south of England. And she she just wasn't like she could, I think that she could kind of make up patterns if I said, you know, I want a yellow jumper with, oh, wow. you know, pink fair isle. And she would just like go, okay. And then she could make it for me. And she used to make me like little dolls clothes. And so she was really... Um, just very accomplished and just kind of did that and she taught me how to knit um and then my mom sewed a lot of my clothes when I was a kid so she she did a lot of sewing um yeah so between the two of them but she was a real pattern follower for her sewing but she yeah, made yeah. really beautiful garments um so taught me how to read patterns which you know super helpful and also you know sewed some clothes for me so yeah I can um yeah kind of crafty background I guess great, great influences yeah. Um, I, I often, so I have two young daughters myself and often get, get asked if um, they have taken on uh, any of the interest in sewing. So I'm interested, tell, tell us a little bit about your daughter. Does she have any interest at all? No, she's, no. she's, she's <laughs> she lives at home, but um, she's right across the hall. So I'll be nice, but um, no, she's like, won't tell her. no, she um, kind of, she thought like, oh, it'd be so cool if I could make my clothes, but she just, um, doesn't have the patience I think like she was yeah. just like I was like no you have to really use a pattern you can't just kind of and you probably need like you know more, it, anyway so yeah she tried for a bit and then it just it she's a writer and that's where her creative passion lies so that's great yeah, yeah. so she hasn't gotten into it as much as I try I keep trying <laughs> same with me I, I try yeah. with my two littles and they have varying degrees of interest depending upon the weather so <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah I might like to move on just a, a little bit. Um, so as I had the honor of kind of going through some of your history, um, I myself noted some um, really great evolution in your style, in your in your palette, in your technique. So I was wondering if you could tell us 
um, just a little bit about that from your own perspective. Guide us through kind of the early days of your mm. quilt making until what you're doing today. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I was thinking about it a little bit and I cert I haven't really had any sort of plan. I mean, I, mm. I work, I work full time. So I just kind of quilt where I can. And I think, um, I guess, you know, obviously I would say like huge moment for me was the first time I went to QuiltCon. So I was, I would think like the flag day and that mix and match quilt were ones I did before I went to QuiltCon. Yeah. I entered a quilt in, I guess, whenever Savannah was, I guess, is that 2017 maybe? And I was very surprised it got in and mm -hmm. it was very, very simple. I mean, it's a quilt I still really like, but, um, I hadn't really gone to a modern quilt show and my guild is really, really tiny. So sure. um, we have about like eight or 10 members. So I wasn't really seeing a ton of other modern quilts except for, you know, on Instagram or whatever. And, um, but seeing them in person is so different. And I just was really incredibly inspired. And yeah. like, even like quilting detail, like I was really just doing kind of cross hatching and, um so just kind of all the things you can do with quilting and all the different color palettes so that was a big big turning point for me I think actually so like the pop beads quilt um I design I drew that on my way home in the car from Savannah oh, okay. and I did make it for a long time but then I was like yeah I really like that design so um yeah so that was a big big turning point for me and then just going every year has always been really inspiring for me so for sure what I noticed as I was looking through is it it does seem like you with each new quilt there tend to be more and more curves. Um, I don't know if that's I don't know if that's purposeful, but I just wonder um, is that you know a technique that you picked up and 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 developed over time or tell us about the curves. Yeah, so that, oh, that's another big turning point. I got a clammy ruler and okay <laughs> and I it's so well designed and the instructions are so great. Um, I just, I use that most of the time. Like I, I make templates and stuff if I do a pattern, but I really just use that ruler. I have it, maybe not, I don't have the huge one, but I have most of the sizes. Nice. Um, yeah, and I just love it as a form. I'm kind of drawn to like more curvy line things in all design. And um, so I think once I figured out that I could make curves in quilting, I got very excited. And yeah, I pretty much, yeah. It's a whole new tool, right? Yeah, it, yeah, and it, yeah, and just really good instructions. I mean, I'm not very, um, I don't have good spatial awareness. <laughs> okay. I don't know, I'm, it's just, I'm like really bad with left and right. Like it's just missing that part of my brain, but that tool is, oh, that's even for someone who has that kind of issue, it's so well designed. It made it, I, I get it and yeah, I use it all the time, so yeah. Very good, and I, I also noticed um, in the evolution of your work that you um, came to paper piecing and now English paper piecing I've seen most recently from you. Are those new things that you're you're interested in exploring? Yeah, so that the paintscape is, um, she's her name is Florence Knapp, but her, it's Flossy Tea Cake. So that's her pattern. It's amazing. Okay, okay. Yeah, so that's not, yeah, you can see it's very, very different. So that's not, but I like to um, use other people's patterns. Sometimes I mostly, but if it's a different type of skill, and I also love Carolyn Friedlander's pattern. So for needle turn applique, I've done some of her patterns. Um, I know I noticed that from your Instagram. <laughs> yeah, she's a Flor you know, another Floridian, but of um, course. Yeah. So yeah, I love her patterns too. Um, and I think it's it's fun to try other because it kind of um for me it kind of sort of awakens a different part of my brain to kind of see how someone else sort of you know uses shapes and thinks about design so I, yeah yeah usually one once a year I make a quote from somebody else's pattern I, I love that as a yeah just a box that you have to check throughout the year and uh, add it <laughs> to your toolkit that's wonderful yeah so I'd like to I'm going to move on to the next slide where I'd like to share um, be, these two I'd like you to talk about these two quilts um, these are quilts that have perhaps been the most recognized of yours Mm -hmm. um, at QuiltCon, you've had several in this show, of course, but uh, the one on the left, Astronomer's Daughter, took second place mm -hmm. in the modern traditional category in 2019. And the one on the right, uh, Broadcast, was in the Best of QuiltCon exhibit 
uh, in 2018. So hoping that you could tell us a little bit just about these quilts in particular, and maybe moreover, what was your experience at the show with them being so well recognized? Um, yeah, so I guess 2018 is broadcast. So that I think, yeah, I brought my clammy ruler. I was very excited. <laughs> and I, um, I was really into at the time doing um, origami paper for sketches. Mm -hmm. So I like cut out a bunch of little half circles and um, kind of came up with that center design and I made the quilt and then I didn't realize that it looks exactly like the CBC logo. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe I saw it as a kid growing up in England, but I didn't, yep. really, but people really like that about it. Um, so it kind of has a similar feel. It doesn't, the CBC doesn't have those kind of leafy things, but the center is kind of the same as the logo. Yep. Um, yeah. So that was, I guess, yeah, that must have been the second quilt con I went to. Um, and it was really, it was so fun. I think um, I might, it always, quilt con's always around the same time as my anniversary. So my husband okay. often comes with me and we were um, licking the show. We we're trying to find my quilt and we came to it and there were two women just sort of standing by it, talking about it and looking at it closely and, um, and I am, I'm less shy now as, you know, I'm sort of kind of shy. Yeah. And, um, my husband was like, no, my wife made that quilt. <laughs> we'll talk to them. So it was really, yeah, it was really, really fun. Um, I, it was really, um, yeah, pretty exciting. And then, yeah. um, we were driving, we'd driven out to Malibu and I got a, you know, an email that it was going to be in best of cool, you know, they, you yeah. know, I think you have like four hours to let them know if you're okay with them setting <laughs> at the show. And I was like, pull over, <laughs> email them back. So, yeah, so that was really exciting. And it was fun to see the pictures of it, you know, it traveling. traveled all over, right? Traveled all over. Yeah. Yeah. Like way more places than I've ever been. So <laughs> that was really fun. Um, and then that was, I decided to make a pattern out of it. So that was, I'd done some like kind of really simple patterns, not very well designed, honestly. I mean, like the design, you know, the layout and the illustrations and stuff. So I, I got a lot better at that. Um, and I made a pattern for broadcast and that was really fun to kind of see how other people have interpreted it, all the different colorways. And that was, sure. yeah, so it's good. And then Astronomer's Daughter, um, yeah, that one was a funny one. I honestly, it's not my favorite of my quilts, um, but I, the quilting was, that was a big, I did really elaborate quilting on it. I did, yep. um, I, I probably, it's probably behind me, but um, so that was, that was fun. And, um, and I, yeah, same experience it was really fun to talk to people and tell them how, you know, how I did it. and. Um, yeah. So yeah, that yeah that was good too. So it kind of it's similar. A, yeah. It's, but. it's an in interesting point that you make because I have heard several people <laughs> say like when they have had maybe multiple quilts in one show and one one and a word like oh that wasn't the one that I expected. So it's so yeah. interesting how how things play out like that. But yeah, really, it's, yeah. It's a beautiful piece, and I think that oh, you know, we we have seen people um, take inspiration from these two pieces. Um, over subsequent mm -hmm. years, you can draw lines to to some of the yeah. quotes that we're going to see in the show, I'm sure. Yeah. So okay. You you uh, mentioned that you made broadcast into a pattern, and I was mm -hmm. going to ask you a little bit about the patterns that you make. These are the a couple that I pulled from, mm -hmm. from your website. I know that there are more, and I think I actually did them in the wrong order. So they are okay. <laughs> more contemporary on the on the left side and some of the older ones on the right. But I do find yeah. it interesting, like when people make patterns, they, they have something to say, right? You make a pattern to put your work out into the world and try to teach other people these skills and techniques that you have. So could you tell us a little bit about that? What what was it about these particular quilts um, that made you want to take that extra step of, of writing them up? Um, yeah, so I, yeah, as I said, so I, I made some patterns um, and then I guess actually, so broadcast was the second pattern I did. The first one okay. I did, that's insane, is the big top quilt. So I made yep. that one as an improv for the Pantone color of the year challenge. So yeah. 
if you can see the orange one, it's not super regular, but it was fun. Okay. I mean, it's an interesting experience. Like it's improv, but I'm not a really improv quilter. So it doesn't really look like it, but I didn't use any patterns that I didn't use rulers. So wow. even if it doesn't really kind of look super improv it was. Um, but a lot of people responded to that quilt and said, oh, could you make a pattern? And I thought, well, um, I wasn't really going to. And then um, Heather Ross and Annabelle Wrigley were coming out with their Ruby and B solids. And they asked if I would make a version using their fabrics. So that was exciting. So I thought, well, if I'm going to remake it, I'll probably have to kind of pattern it. Otherwise, I won't won't be able to make it so sure, sure. <laughs> so I did that and then I so then I ended up making a pattern from that and it's the it's incredibly complicated oh, I really? just taught it yeah it's like it, yeah it's very complex it's these big huge wedges and sure. it's I just taught it to the Austin modern quilt guild and it's actually very fun to teach because it's just kind of a weird no one would start no one would sort of go I want to make a pattern and do that yeah, I had yeah, a quilt yeah. and I it was like, how am I going to make a pattern for it? So, um, so that, that's that one. Um, yeah, I think the other ones were just ideas I had. You know, I wanted to do a medallion quilt. Um, yeah, and then I was like really interested in New York beauty. I think I'd seen some New York beauty quilts that I really liked, and I wanted to kind of try something there. Um, yeah, it's always just kind of whatever I'm interested in. And if it's like, oh, that would probably make a good pattern, or that would be something yeah. I could... I like make that, into uh, a pattern and I sort of I haven't done one in a few years now because I just my work kind of ebbs and flows too sure. so I'm really busy I don't really like spending a ton of time on the computer but if things are kind of quieter then, then I, so. <laughs> I, I really like I really like that idea that you mentioned about big top like no, nobody would start off this way or nobody would say I think well, that some of the the most interesting patterns that are out there are ones that really provide something new um, I, rem I remember once a chef saying, uh, I, I don't make chili recipes because there's so many out there, right? Like I'll make a recipe for something that's new and interesting and different. And so I think that that's what you've done here that resonates for me. And so, yeah. so cool how you brought that to the rest of us. <laughs> um, one other thing that you mentioned is teaching. I know that you're a, a, a very wonderful regarded teacher. You'll be teaching three classes um, at QuiltCon, I understand. I stole your your quote um, from your Instagram post about who else is thinking about pie, because all of your <laughs> <laughs> all of all of your classes are in the piecing category. So, yeah. so that made me chuckle. But just wondered if you could tell us a little bit, um, you know, why these classes? What is it interesting about these particular techniques that you like to share with others? Um, I think. There, so the two, the postage stamp one, those are kind of one inch squares. And I think one of the things um, I've kind of struggled with as a quilter is accuracy. Like mm -hmm. I tend to do things that don't require accuracy, <laughs> but I thought, you know, sometimes it matters and you really do want to, it's something that will really enhance the design like it's, it's necessary. And then sometimes, so for me, it took me a long, I guess I'm, pretty much self-taught so um like even things like a scant quarter inch seam it took me I, I didn't really understand that until very recently so yeah. and now I'm like oh that makes sense yeah. so I think <laughs> even like sometimes especially maybe for modern quilters maybe kind of come to it in a way either from another craft or um different pathways than sort of maybe people who are traditional quilters and so kind of those sort of basic skills I think can really um, help people achieve what they want to in their designs and their in their own making. So I think that one, um, and it's just, you can do fun things. You can make your own pattern in that grid um, and it sort of teaches like color and value and things, you know, so there's a lot of kind of basic skills. It's like a workshop. We won't do a ton of, no one's going to finish a quilt top. It takes a long time, but we'll kind of really focus on those basic things. So, um, and same with the miter corner, it's really making really perfect. And like, and I, I'll probably talk about perfect, not perfect doesn't right, like, right, but right. as perfect as you need to be um, half square triangles and then same like kind of color and value. And then um, just different ways you can make a very, very simple kind of design your own. So varying the width of the strips, you know, different sure. 
So I think those will be fun. I've been working like crazy this weekend trying I'm to sure. get all my, <laughs> you have to do, I mean, I, it's really good and helpful, but you have to have handouts for your class. Of course, and yeah. what, yeah. So uh, yeah, I've been working like, yeah. All, so, but, uh, so it's fresh in my mind. And then the playing with shapes is something that I'm just, that's kind of what I'm really interested in now. It's mm. actually kind of going back to things I started with sort of early on was just kind of it's not like I said I'm not an improv quilter but I don't like super regular design so it's sure. kind of like doing the the shapes with the rulers and all, all that and then fitting them together like jigsaw puzzle and I think um, a lot of things like illustrators I like and other sort of art forms that I like kind of have that feel so um, I've made a couple quilts in that style of and yeah, so I'm excited about that. So I think um, that one will be really fun and that'll just be kind of people playing with the design board, okay. have less sort of instruction, but just more kind of walking around and talking. And I said, guided, guided play. Guided yeah, play. yeah, I think it will be a very playful class. So that's awesome. Well, yeah. hey, thank you so much. I do want to allow the folks on the line to maybe ask a couple questions as we transition over to me. So love for anybody to come off mute or if anybody has put a question in the chat, maybe Francis, you could help um, with some of those. All right, we don't have questions in the chat right now, but if anyone okay. wants to pop in um, and we will also have time for questions at the end as well. Anything specific for Bridget? You can just shout it out or else we'll- I have a question. Okay. Please. Um, let me put my video on so that you can see me. Let me see. Oh, I. I'm my name is Al my name is Alex Fletcher. I'm uh, I'm kind of new to quilting, but I I just love it so much. Uh, Bridget mentioned a ruler that she, that was transformative for her the cur when she got into curves, and yeah. I didn't catch the name of it. Oh yeah, it's, um, the designer is Latifa Safir, S A A F I R, and the ruler is called the Clammy, like C L A M M Y, and it comes in a bunch of different sizes. And the it's Clammy, a super fun tool. Yeah, Latifa Safir. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Bridget. Thank Beautiful you quilts. Question. I love. I admire your work very much. Thank, uh, you. thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, do we have any other questions? And again, if you think of something later, we'll have a little time at the end. Uh, yeah. Okay, now will come the magic yeah. moment. Bridget, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, it was it was a pleasure fun. To thank you. you. Okay. I'm gonna reclaim myself as host. Yes. Charles uh, is spotlighted. Let me find you, Charles. Am I gonna right spotlight you? I'm gonna remove your spotlight. Oh, and now we got Bridget. You're all in the spotlight. <laughs> Let's see, I'm gonna remove your spotlight too. I am sorry. Um, no, you're doing great. Delightful. And thank you to those of you in the chat guiding me through this. I realize I think this is the first time we've been um, interviewing with it. So, um, and now I'm gonna share my screen. Sounds and um, first of all, uh, thank you, Bridget and welcome Denise Schmidt. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make a brief presentation in which I make claims for Denise, um, grand claims for her that, uh, and uh, Denise, I'm going to bring you up here. I'm going to spotlight you. I thought I was going, I'll spotlight you. We'll get you. Okay. But I'm going to go ahead and do this and um, make this claim. And then Denise and I are going to chat. So. Basically, I've decided. And so one of the things that if you guys have been participating in this group for a while, you know, I, li I like big picture stuff and I'm an Enneagram five. So I like to find the meanings and the roots and all of that. And my presentation today, again, will be brief, but I'm making the claim that Denise Schmidt is the first modern culture, that she is our prime mover. Denise Schmidt has been called the mother of modern quilting, as well as the godmother of modern quilting. And I'm going to argue today that Denise should be thought of as the prime mover of modern quilting, i.e. the person responsible for establishing the modern quilt movement's early aesthetic. 
parameters, as well as the person who helped a new and growing group of quilters find a way to define themselves outside of traditional categories. In all important ways, Denise was the first modern quilter. Now, let me see. There we go. You might be thinking that maybe Nancy Crow was really the first modern quilter or Gwen Marston or perhaps the G's Bend quilters, but I would argue that while the roots of modern quilting can be, can be found in these quilters' work and all of them have had a huge impact on the modern quilt aesthetic and movement, they aren't modern quilters per se, nor would they understand themselves at such as such. Whereas from the beginning, Denise was exploring the touchstones of what would become the modern quilt aesthetic, including improvisation, minimalism, and modern traditionalism, and importantly, mid-century modern design. When Denise began designing what would become to be called modern quilts, um, in the 1990s, she helped usher in a new quilty movement into being with her book, Denise Schmidt Quilts, which was published in July 2005. Now, it is true that Bill Kerr and Weeks Ringle published the Modern Quilt Workshop in May of 2005, and moreover, Weeks has talked about how she began experimenting with designs she considered and called modern in 1987. However, it should be noted that Denise appeared in Martha Stewart Living, and I had a great graphic for that, sorry guys, in an article where her style was refer referred to as a chic modernist aesthetic, which is to say that her quilts were the first quilts to be referred to as modern in the larger cultural arena and signaled a growing interest in mid-century modern design that would soon be widespread. Moreover, from the early aughts onward, Denise recognized and helped to define a burgeoning quilt movement that would soon be widely known as the modern quilt movement. When fresh modern quilts that was formed on Flickr in 2008, and let us remember that this is where Jackie Gehring and Elisa Haight Carlton met and became friends. The group description read, and now this is a, let me pull this up on my photos for myself. Um, well, anyway, basically said we're trying to make quilts, uh, looking for people who are interested in making quilts in, uh, in the Denise Schmidt style, also looking for a new, uh, uh, looking for other quilters to emerge in, in that style. So she was in the group description named the person who was defining the aesthetic. Now, there were a lot of discussions in, in the group about uh, other quilters, but Denise was a defining uh, quilter. Uh, in those discussions at the very beginning. Um, so today I am officially crowning Denise the prime mover queen of the modern quilt movement. She is queen for the aforementioned points as well as the following. She created the modern quilt movement's first iconic quilts. Um, she was, though, from its earliest days, modern quilters have pointed to many influences. Denise was the only one who emerged not from the art quilt world or the art world, a la Nancy Crow, or from the traditional quilt world, which is where Gwen Marston started, but from the world of graphic design. Her quilts were decidedly modern and modern traditional from the beginning. As a teacher, Denise has long emphasized improvisational methods in her classes, which allowed and still allow people at every skill level to enter the world of quilting. Now it should be noted that Gwen Marston introduced the concept of liberated quilt making in the mid nineties, but again, she was pre-modern, someone who made a path for modern quilters, but was not a modern quilter herself. Denise was the first of the uh, modern entrepreneurs, not only uh, was she designing and selling patterns from the get-go? She was designing and selling fabric, kits, and tools. She established a studio where she worked and taught and still works and teaches. Um, and I think at some point it would be interesting to take a look into modern quilter entre uh, entrepreneurs, of which there are many, and I believe that Denise's business would be one of the touchstones for that discussion. And finally, and this is where I am most sad about not being able to access my slideshow, is Denise was Modern Quilt Team's first ambassador. She has been the public face, so to speak, of the Modern Quilt movement for over 20 years. If the muggles know about Modern Quilt Team, most likely it's because they saw Denise in a plethora of magazines, a lot of home and garden magazines. And if you go to Denise's uh, newly uh, uh, remodeled website, you can uh, see that under media. She has all these great articles starting in the, uh, in the 1990s, some as early as 1996. And my favorite is her People Magazine uh, article. I was gonna say cover, but um, 
I can't remember it. Maybe Madonna was on the cover, but ne Denise was on the inside. And um, perhaps I will find a way to share those pictures with y'all later, or you can go to Denise's site. So for those reasons, um, I, I do I, my thesis and argument is that Denise is the first and the modern culture and the prime mover of the modern um, quilt guild. And thank you everyone who uh, tried to help me in this. Um, you're good people, and I'm going to let that go, and um, yeah, and now, where is Denise, because I'm going to highlight you, there you are, Denise, are you in the spotlight, what can y'all <laughs> see now, who can you see, can you see anybody, what's going on? We see Denise, we just see Denise, we're ready. Okay, you see Denise, this is good, yeah. all right, you don't need to see me, and I'm like, uh, you know, a little, yeah, I can make Denise... Okay, here we go. If you see Denise, Denise, hello. Thank you for being hello. here. Sorry that I didn't. Thank, uh, okay. Thank you for that great introduction. And I have to say, I really like prime mover. Is that good? Better than godmother. <laughs> That's what it's, it's funny because it's like mother and godmother and all of that. And yeah, I like prime mover too. Now, I don't know how, how do you feel about queen? Is that, you know? Not not as much. Uh, yeah. And I think then maybe too, it would like encourage people to bow down to you at QuiltCon. And that would be awkward, I think, is respectful. Well, and then the other thing about, you know, I've always sort of shied away from any kind of labeling and, and, and definitions because I'm claustrophobic. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's also, you know, all of that is a function of looking back at something like how did this get started or whatever and it's never just one person or one thing yeah it's, it's a confluence of events and when when I do a talk about my work I always you know it's the things that were going on in my life at the time that influenced my decision to start a business mm -hmm. making quilts um and I, you know, I, I started out not, I've, I've actually, the ironic thing I told Bridget this about being a judge at QuiltCon this year is um, I've never entered, I've never entered a quilt in any show other than, you know, I've had exhibitions. I had an exhibition at the National Quilt Museum and a long time ago and um, a few other like art gallery situations, but I've never entered a juried show for you know i think because when i started out i knew i wouldn't be you know nobody would have been interested in in what i was doing at that time but anyway um and i did i did start out making finished quilts for the design industry that was how i started so i i showed my work at a trade show and the first year i did that was 1996 and it was a contemporary home furnishings show. So um, I was really interested in channeling the quilts that I fell in love with, with which were vintage quilts. Um, and primarily, I, the book that, that really got me going, was, I'm hearing other people, but. <laughs> yeah, everyone, if you can mute. Um, the, the book that really got me started was um, Abstract Design mm -hmm. in American Quilts. And it was the catalog of a show that had been at the Whitney yeah, in the 70s. Yeah, I was kind of going to Colony and asking about it. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna mute all and then, and now let's see if I have the power to unmute Denise. Okay, Denise, can you unmute yourself? Okay, yeah. okay there we go. Um, so Jonathan Holstein was a was an art curator guy, he and his wife, and they were collecting quilts at flea markets and yard sales that to them looked like the artists they were representing, like Bob Rauschenberg and you know some other contemporary at the time painters in the 70s and they weren't quilt people so they weren't looking at qu quilts that were really yeah. well made they um what they were interested in was the correlation between contemporary art and 
these quilts Thanks. were sometimes a hundred years old or more. And those quilts really caught my imagination because they weren't all perfectly perfect. Most of, you know, and this was 1995, 1996. So the only way to see quilts back then was in books or at quilt shows or um, in quilt magazines. And so, you know, the internet didn't exist, which is hard to believe now, but um, so seeing those quilts, they, they weren't quilts that were at the time well represented anywhere else. You know, I, I wasn't finding, there were lots of books of antique quilts that were parts of people's trousseaus. And those are the quilts that are super finely made and everything lines up or the stitches are really tiny. And the quilts in the Jonathan Holstein book um, were were something else entirely. You know, they were, they were a little bit funky. Kind of think uh, maybe some of you are familiar with um, Roderick Karakoffi's Unconventional and Unexpected. Those kind of quilts, those are later, you know, 20th century quilts. But anyway, I felt like those sort of quilts that had a spareness or they were just kind of weird, but still fabric. And I had grown up sewing and I loved fabric. Um, my mom was a sewer. She made cl clothes for herself and all four of us kids, even though she worked full time. Um, and I, I thought the, I had friends who showed at that furniture show where I, I showed my quilts and, um, it was, you know, there were some, the smaller vendors were really interesting uh, designers and stuff. Then there were also the big furniture companies and Italian, you know, kitchen people, but it was those small vendors and designers who were really interesting. And I just felt like the quilts that I had in my head were a perfect complement to the sort of slick contemporary aesthetic that was happening at that show. Like handmade, but, you know, kind of channeling those older quilts that were really simple, but they weren't about everything being perfect and, and lining up. So I had this idea in mind and I ended up, I took a class. I'm just like answering all those questions that you emailed to me. <laughs> good, good. Okay. <laughs> you be in charge. <laughs> um, I took a class. I signed up for a class with Nancy Crow. The work that she was doing at the time was really interesting to me. Her earlier work, not so much because it was all very straight lines. It looked like my sister is eight years older and she was in art school when I was a kid. And, um, you know, they used to lay down masking tape and, you know, paint these shapes. That's kind of what Nancy's quilt quilts look like, you know, earlier than this period after she was introduced to the work of, um, Anna Williams. And that just like transformed her whole way of working. And I was interested in Nancy's work, but also I gave myself this two week class up at Haystack in Maine um, as a way to build momentum for starting this business. I was working full time and it was a little bit daunting. I, th I think I had already signed up for the furniture show in the, the next May and took this class the end of the summer before that as a way to just, you know, because I didn't know how else, you know, I'd have to do it all at night. And anyway, so that class was great. And I, I you know, I was fresh out of art school. So Nancy's rigor was familiar and, and perfect for me. And I, th I think my aesthetic is very different and I had figured out the improv thing before I got up there, but working with her really solidified that as a way of working. And even though, you know, I planned on showing improv quilts, I knew that I could replicate those. So the idea was that I, I could remake that drunk glove in a log cabin for a client without using a pattern. So, um, Anyway, that was how I started. And I, and I did that for several years and gradually um, my boss was very forgiving and I eventually you know, went part-time. I worked four days a week and then I worked three days a week 
and alternated three days, four days, and eventually at some point, you know, just had to quit entirely. But it was a slow build, and um, and but I did get a lot of uh, press coverage very early on because the show was well attended by the press, um, and the quilts were so graphic. It was, you know, they were far more colorful than a piece of furniture <laughs> and there were also rug people Angela Adams was another early pe people and um fun quilts the wing ringles were there after a couple of years they also started exhibiting and showing their work in that venue um and now you can start asking me questions because <laughs> okay, I got to remember. OK, what? Um, so you have talked about. Yeah, I was asking you who you've learned from. Um, this wasn't on the on the list, but I'm curious um, and, and interested because I, I noted your book um, that came out in 2005 that so many people have referred to as a touchstone as, and, and, uh, and, it, and it really I mean, weeks and bills book was out too but suddenly we had two books out there and saying this this is something happening how did you did you know there was an audience for this book when it came out and you're and so tell me how and how did you discover that audience how did that audience discover you how, how did you become aware I guess that there was an um, audience so the the show that where I showed my quilts was called the International Contemporary Furniture Fair and it was it was held the same, it overlapped with the stationary show at the Javits Center in New York. So everybody would go to both shows. Mm -hmm. I think also the surface design show would happen at the same time, which is how I ended up meeting Donna Wilder, who at the time was, she was the only, when I decided I wanted to do fabric, well, even, even that was, after a study from a different company contacted me and I put together a whole presentation for fabric and it fell through. Um, I looked in my database and the, the one name that I had that had anything to do with fabric was Donna Wilder and um, the collection was Flea Market Fancy. So that was how that happened, but everything came from that show. So Chronicle Books walked the stationary show and they first published stationary with images of my quilts that I was showing. Hmm. So that happened first. I don't remember what year we started with the stationery, but we did all kinds of product um, with my finished quilts on it. And then, then they talked to me about doing a book. And by then that was, you know, 2004, 2005, and there was a lot happening online mm -hmm. um, in terms of groups, of people, the the fresh quilts, modern quilts that you talked about, and um, blogs. So it felt like what had, and I had my friend Joelle Hoverson owned Pearl Soho, and you know what was happening in the knitting realm felt like a natural next thing, you know. To anyway, I had no idea, but. I took it very seriously. It was exciting. I put a lot of effort into it. And um, I still am very proud of the book. It's out of print now, <laughs> but uh, I'm still really proud of that book and all the projects. And I've thought about re, re unearthing it and re updating it and reprinting it maybe, but it's a big job, so. Yeah, yeah, so. for sure. And um, Audrey just posted, I still have my copy of that, that book, as do I. We could probably get a show of hands. Um, and this is, and I want to give you a little time to talk about what's going on now, because I don't want to talk, I mean, it, it's so, one of the uh, interesting things, there are many interesting things about you, Denise, and we only touched on so few. I love, I believe in your bio, um, you say something like, you know, I read somewhere you said, if, if you could do anything else, what would you do? And it's like, you said, I would be a monk, which I think that could be a whole, yeah, <laughs> maybe you feel differently now, but that's actually my point is that you are, although you may be a prime mover, you are not really a historic figure and that you are still teaching, you are still designing fabric and creating um, uh, patterns. And so I want to, I, I, I want to get a sense of what's going on with you right now. What projects are you excited about? What is happening today um, in your world? Um, well, 
you know, so as I mentioned, I started out in the finished quilt world and somehow, you know, I, I moved into the quilt industry as we know it in terms of designing fabric. And then I started doing patterns to support the fabric. That was how that came about. And the, the pattern quilts are a little bit different than the finished quilts that I was making. But to me, it's all me and, and there's a lot of overlap. And I have different styles of doing things um, that I think are all representative of my aesthetic. But um, wait, what was the question? Oh, what am I doing now? So- Who are you now, Denise? What, is, what, what project are you excited about? I, want, I, I don't want to like cast you in resin. Like, look who we've dug out from the, from the archives you are working now. What are you excited about right now? Well, I'm gonna, I am gonna be at um, QuiltCon I'm going to have a really fun button that I'm handing out so you can come and get it about joining my club. So um, I've been designing fabric since 1996 and the way the industry works, most collections get printed once. And because the stores want new designs in and um, all of that, you know, it's the, the collections don't stay in print forever. They're, they're printed once. But I, I own all that artwork. And when Free Spirit announced they were closing way back whenever that was, and I was gonna be without a, a fabric manufacturer, the first thing I thought was like, oh, yes. <laughs> because I just, I wanted to do something that was my own. And so I've been working on it ever since and I'm, taking that ar archive of artwork that I've that I have and I'm printing it myself now and um I the idea that I came up with was to do them as panels so it's it's basically like one cut of fabric it's over two yards that has nine different of my fabric prints recolored so oh. it's a great way to you know, get their, right, this year, it's all about color specific. So the first panel that ships in March is really yummy yellows, but I'm I'm introducing it as a club for uh -huh. this membership. So we're gonna have Zoom meetups and I'm in the middle now of designing all these fun swag things that I'm gonna, we kind of have an embroidered membership patch. That is the best. Yeah. And some other really fun things and maybe even a secret handshake. I don't know. But um, I'll be in the Aliso booth on Thursday, the 22nd. And I'm going to have a fun participatory thing. But I'm, I'm excited about it because, you know, I know there's a lot of... The, the quilt industry is a, is a strange beast. <laughs> You know, you have these big fabric companies and players and, you know, I've loved everything that I've done in it, but it's hard to have, it's hard to have your own, you know, like a take ownership of your creative input or output in that, that realm. And um, so we'll see what happens. I have no idea where it's going to go, but I love the idea of a, of a panel that has a bunch of different designs on it and numeric art, which is, you know, my, my background as a graphic designer. So I'm really into typography and all of that. So kind of including that as part of the project. So. And is the project, is there overall name of the project or the line of fabric that's coming out or just. It's the Patrick Panel Club. <laughs> All right, and we should look for you. And are, will you be at QuiltCon the whole time, passing around? Yep, but Thursday through Saturday. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, so that's exciting. Have, yeah, that's I'm, I'm really excited about it. I'm excited about the button and well, and the club and the secret handshake. So that you think about that before next Thursday, and then we're going to start passing that around. Um, does anyone have questions for Denise or Bridget? We're at three o'clock, but hopefully if, if there are questions, maybe we can uh, hang on here for a few minutes. Um, if not, um, I, I certainly want to thank both Bridget and Denise Um Oh, good. And Carla has put, oh, this is so cool. Thank you. Carla has put in the chat the um uh the the link for the uh 
patchwork panel. For, um, so that is in the chat right now. And um, and okay, and we have here's from Michelle Wilkie. Here's a question. What advice would you give a quilter who wants to be more in the art world? What would you suggest they look to do first? Oh, that's interesting. And I think there are some good examples of people who who have, are sort of segueing into that, like Heather Jones. You know, for a while she had a fabric line and she was doing patterns, and she's kind of more firmly moved into the art realm. And it's you know the art world is a, is a separate animal. For a while, I I endeavored. <laughs> I had a lot of connections, and I really endeavored to kind of bridge have a foot in both and it was very challenging because the art world isn't you know they're accepting of artists using quilting or fabric as a technique but I was really I was really attached to the idea of making functional art and that does not sit well in the gallery realm for whatever reason but there's a lot of ways to position yourself in that that world. And it's just becoming really familiar with what galleries are interested in textile work, um, doing residencies and meeting, you know, I think the more you meet people in that realm that you learn about shows and other artists and, and just kind of study how they're doing things or where they're showing or how they talk about their work, it's just, it's a little different than, you know, what we know of as the quilt world, I think. Bridget, do you have? Well, before we go off Denise, I'd just say it's funny because an art consultant came up to me recently and they were saying, they were they said, oh, I've got quilts in my collection. So I was expecting them to say, geez, Ben, they actually have your quilts, Denise, that brought <laughs> to in New York. Um, back in the, I think the eighties or nineties, and oh. they had they're a collector of yours. Who so is it? Kind of, Alan Thomas. He's he's based in North Carolina. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> I just thought I'd let you know. Well, and I I do still make my commissioned quilts. It's um, but it's it's been a challenge. The lot, you know, like I have to be honest. It's it's a challenge to balance both the the industry is about you know and I always felt like I needed both things to, in order to make you know I'm making a living this is how I <laughs> make a living and you know the the quilts the custom quilts or creating my own work for an exhibition is creatively satisfying but you know I also really love doing the patterns and the fabric too it's it's all a piece of it but they're very different animals Bridget do you have any connection to the art world or any ambitions in in that in that way um I have I have a friend um from college who's um and visual artist and she her paintings are so quilty so we always like kind of are like a little mutual admiration society and she, I've been super in, it's just funny. We seem very synced up. Like she's really into green and I'm going through a green phase <laughs> in my mind. And she lives in Ithaca, New York, where I grew up. So I always think like, oh, it'd be so fun to do an exhibit together. So I have that in the back of my mind. I just have to kind of <laughs> I, like work up the courage. If she's like, we've known each other for a long time, but we're not, we're not super in touch, only just sort of internet friendly. Um, and I'll also have enough quilts to show. I mean, that's, I'm just kind of always um, pressed for time, really. It's hard. I don't, I can't make that many quilts because I'm, I'm similar to Denise. I'm like, do a little, I like all the pieces that I do. I really like teaching. I really like making patterns. I really like making quilts. Mm -hmm. But then I work full time. So it's kind of like, um, it's a time crunch. So, but yeah, I do. I have an interest in that. I think it would be really fun. And I just, um, her artwork is great. Her name is Domenica Brockman, if anyone's interested in seeing some very cool quilty paintings. Yeah. Um, 
yeah so much for her and yeah it's it's interesting all the things that you do and denise and so many quilters and that's what i you know i, I said in in my presentation i think it would be interesting to look into that how many quilters and particularly I, I don't know if this is more so in the modern world i'd have to look into that but who really are not just quilting not just showing but also how you know are teaching and designing and all of that and it's fascinating and um it's a lot of work, you know, it's a lot of work and um, I'm too lazy to ever even think about it, but I'm impressed <laughs> by the people who do. We've got a good question here. Uh, it's an interesting one. Uh, Peggy asks for both of you, what do you think of the collaboration between G's Bend and Target? That is one of the questions of the day. Other than isn't Tracy Chapman great? Wasn't it good to see her? <laughs> the other one is what, 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 what about this collaboration between um, Target? And G's been quilters. Good, bad, a lot of different things in between. I, I haven't seen all the the pieces. Um and I don't know enough about how it came about or you know who's met and made it happen or how directly involved the the G's been quilters are. I hope that from what I've gleaned from a post here or there, it sounds like they're more directly involved in it than past projects mm. that have used their work where they didn't really reap much benefit. Um, I hope that's the case because, you know, certainly I've licensed things um, and have, I've been careful about the relationships that I've had and I'm proud of all those things that I've done, even, you know, the books and the stationery is all licensing. And it isn't necessarily the most lucrative thing, <laughs> but it can, it can, you know, bring a lot more exposure to a broader audience and that can be helpful for for what they're so I hope that they're benefiting yeah but I don't know enough about yeah Bridget pieces. have you given much thought to this or been following it at all um yeah just I mean just a little bit um and social media and yeah I think likewise I think hopefully they're really benefiting from it I mean I think one of the things um I've sort of thought about with that group of quilters is you know their work has been shown in museums um and represented as art but they don't as a group or as individual makers don't seem to have sort of crossed that divide from being makers and sort of folk artists into being artists in their own right even though their work has been represented as art and I think um there's some probably complicated things happening there obviously and I you know I think um yeah, I think if it brings them broader exposure, I mean, I think obviously, you know, there's it seems complicated to sort of assume that they're being exploited. They're I know hopefully they're not. Um, and um, yeah, so I yeah, I guess I just wouldn't want to make any assumptions about yeah. their rationale and you know the the um, arrangement they have, but. Well, they've um, been around the block a few times now. Yeah. One, I assume they have much better lawyers than they used to. And they, you know, and, yeah. uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I do. I think that they've probably learned a lot over the last couple of decades in terms of having control over their work. But you're, it is complicated. And um, and Peggy says, thanks so much for your thoughts. Um, and um, Charles, do you have any last questions or if anyone speak now or forever hold your peace? I, I do want to say, let me just say I'm one just thing. I'm modern. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, okay. go ahead, Francis. Go okay, ahead. let me say one thing. Um, Audrey was very kind and gave us the uh, link to Dominic. Is it Dominica Brockman's uh -huh. site? And so when I will do a follow up letter, someone also, um, a couple people have been walking me through this. Um, uh, Carla told me how to make a PDF of the slideshow. And so I will send that out because I would love to, well, first of all, I spent a lot of time on it. So I would love to share it with you and people who've been here before know that this is the first time this has happened. It's kind of embarrassing, but I'll get through it. Um, anyway, but um, 
yes, but thank you. But I will include that information. And if anyone has other information they think is interesting that the, the members of this group would love to have access to, send it to me and I'll include it. Um, okay, Charles, take it away. No, I was just going to say I was monitoring very closely the chat. No, no additional questions from there. But again, wanted to thank uh, both Denise and Bridget uh, for your time and look forward to seeing you in just 11 short days. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, Bridget, will you have buttons? Uh, no, I'm so furiously getting ready for my classes. I'll have nothing to share. Oh, so. So you're, just, you're making teaching your priority is supposed to swag. Okay. Now yes. Yes. <laughs> no. swag. But yes, we look forward to seeing uh, everyone who's going to be there. Um, you know, uh, we look forward to seeing you and particularly look uh, forward to seeing um, people who have quilts and see, uh, I look forward to all of it. I look, and then I look forward to having a cold for the following week afterwards. But it's going to be <laughs> great. Um, so Denise and Bridget, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being here. Um, that is just fantastic. And uh, maybe in a couple of years, we'll get you back and you can tell us all about what judging was like, but it's probably a little too fresh to talk about, but we'll be very excited um, uh, to, to see what y'all came up with. That must've been a hard job. That's that. We'll leave it at that. Thank you, everyone. Um, again, Thanks if so you much. have any follow-up, just uh, email us and especially follow up links or what have you. Um, and I will put something together and do my best to send it out tomorrow. But thanks everybody for being here. And if you've got ideas for another, for our next topic, do let me, do let us know. We would love to hear from you. So thank you so much. And um, I think that's it. So bye everyone. I'm going to stop recording. Bye. Goodbye.